what the heck is the effect EQ and can I remove it because it seems to be there on every vocal preset. The effect EQ is exactly what it sounds like. It's an EQ that is on that particular effect. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's add a new vocal track. Let's pretend we're adding a new vocal track. We come in here, we tap on audio recorder, and there you go, it drops us in here. It drops us into punchy presence. That's the, the one that we're using here. Now, if we go out and we tap on our options here, and we go to plugins at EQ, you can see here that it's automatically set us up a compressor. It's a, set up an effect EQ, a tape delay, a stereo delay. And everyone keeps asking me, what is the effect EQ? It doesn't actually seem to do anything. Well, here's what it is. It's a simplified version of the visual EQ. So if we click or tap on this blue button, look what happens over here. The low and the high go away. If we turn it back on, they come back. So this can actually set our bass. So this is turning the bass down, turning the bass up, or we can turn the treble up or the treble down. Now it doesn't do anything to the visual EQ. It's a separate effect EQ that sits here. It's kind of a throwback from the smart controls that you get in GarageBand, Mac and, and Logic. So it's kind of handy if you just want a quick way to add a little bit of bass or treble there. But if you turn it off, it doesn't really matter. And the other thing here, you can, the same thing is with your compressor. So what a lot of folks don't realize when they start with GarageBand is that these are linked to these. So before we had this, all we had was this. So this is kind of like the, the simple control. You, you select your, your thing here, you come in, let's just change it to lead vocals, and you've just got a basic tone control. This time we've got a one dial control. More bass, more treble. And we've got pitch control, compressor, drive, and vocal hall. If we come back out here, we click on this, we go to plugins and EQ, this is like the next level of that. So again, we turn on the effect EQ there, and this is this tone knob here. If we want it to go off again, we tap there, guess what? It grays out, it's not there. If we don't want it at all, we can safely remove it. So all you need to do is tap the edit button there and get rid of it, boom, delete, and it's gone. Now, because these are special plugins that are only attached to these particular vocal presets, you can't bring them back. So the one that you want to be really careful of is say you want some pitch control, because hey, who's not a bit pitchy every now and then, and you've added enhanced tuning through lead vocals or one of the others, and you remove it like this, because you're like, nah, I can handle it, I don't need it. You can't actually bring that back now because if you hit the plus button here, you'll notice that that's not one of your 10 standard effects and it's not any of your Apple audio unit effects. They're not actually in there at all. So what you would then have to do is go back and reselect that and there you can see it brings back in that enhanced tuning you can turn it on. And again, if you turn all these off, you'll see it grays out all of that business and it's gone. So my advice with this, with the effect EQ, it's not really needed. It's just kind of there to give you a bit of a quick option for your EQ, but guess what? You've already got one that's built in that you can't remove. So why not remove your effect EQ and then you can use your visual EQ to give you that treble boost you need or to give you that bass cut that you need and then you've freed up another slot because now we can actually add in a cool flanger in here or we can add in any of the other effects that we want to add in anything from our downloaded effects we can add into here and we've got ourselves some great options so there you go everything you ever wanted to know about that weird effect eq but we're afraid to ask